Hey there, thank you so much for joining me. In this video, I'm kicking off a series which is going to dive pretty deep into how I set up my channel switching configurations. Now, a lot of people who have been longtime supporters of my channel or have come and watched videos occasionally have asked me to dive a little deeper into how I'm using channels and MIDI ports, MIDI CC values to essentially replace key switching, which has for a long time been the standard and still is the standard for switching articulations in an orchestral library. And the reason I use channel switching, uh, well, the biggest reason is that it's more reliable and more efficient for my workflow. I'm gonna outline exactly how I do it. I'm gonna talk about the details in VE Pro, the details in, uh, in Dorico and my expression maps and so on, so that that's all very clear. Whether or not this is a big, a great model for you is going to obviously depend, but I think if you are a media composer or you're a hobbyist, or even if you're an orchestrator and you're trying to create generally reliable and good quality mockups, then you've probably experienced the challenge of not getting consistent results from your sound libraries. And maybe you've even bought expensive libraries that come with expression maps, and when you install them, they work, but you'd like to tweak them, and that's just too intimidating. So part of this is about informing everyone about how Darko's backend features really work and how, how they can be demystified to remove all the technical concerns and get you back to creating music. Part of this also is to recommend a methodology that I've been developing for years and I can say really, really works well for me. Um, I get consistent results. I can integrate new libraries anytime I want. Um, it's very easy for me to go in and modify either the configurations of instruments in different families, my project template, my expression maps, percussion maps, endpoints, all that. So over the course of the next several videos that I'm going to be publishing, you're going to see how I apply this to strings and brass and winds and percussion and so on. I am in the examples here going to use the Berlin Free Orchestra. This is for a few reasons. One is it really is pretty good. It does have true legato on a solo violin and solo cello, a flute and a clarinet. So it sounds pretty good, gives you a lot of flexibility. I would say that the percussion leaves quite a bit to desired, be desired because you don't have enough articulations there. Um, but for sketching, it's great. This library really is functional. And maybe more importantly, the scope of it isn't so overblown that these videos would have to be at 40 by five minutes each. I wanted to keep things pretty concise and focus on the infrastructure, the methodology, the approach more than an individual library. I'm just using Berlin Free Orchestra here as an example, okay? So I wanna kick things off by talking about the benefits of planning your switching structure. Like I said, I use channel switching and everybody who follows my channel is probably somewhat familiar with my approach. Channel switching essentially replaces the more traditional key switching approach. I don't use key switches at all. And um, it's one of the things I love about the Berlin series, but I know Spitfire also would support this work model workflow. Uh, I know that um, Cinematic Studios libraries also support this workflow. Not all libraries do allow you to switch articulations with MIDI CCs. Now they do all allow you to switch articulations essentially with channels, um, but you really need that MIDI CC component in order for this whole methodology to work. So before you dive into this full head on, do check if you have libraries that support MIDI CC switching, because if they don't, you might find that a bit limiting in this workflow. Now this is a blank spreadsheet and essentially helps me organize my thoughts as I plan. And I would recommend that you also try to plan accordingly. There are three main components. There's MIDI ports, there's MIDI channels, and then over here, there's MIDI CC values. Now, the ports, that all is dependent upon what kind of, what kind of environment you're hosting your instruments in. Again, for this demonstration, I'm gonna be using Vienna Ensemble Pro, VE Pro which I have used in many of my other videos. I use it because I like to abstract the instrument loading out into another piece of software. It does speed up switching between Darko and Cubase and other softwares that I may use. But also it has this uh, nice added benefit in my methodology here of allowing unique sets of ports 
to be assigned instances. And we're going to go over that in, in a minute, just kind of what an instance is and how the ports are configured. But essentially, a port for me is an instrument. So I might have, you know, piccolo um, and uh, horn one, right? And uh, solo violin. So port one is only a piccolo on the winds instance. And port one is horn one on the brass instance in VE Pro. So I can reuse MIDI ports for different instruments as long as they're organized in instances. That's one of the things I love about working with VE Pro. So over here in VE Pro, you see these colored blocks. If you're new to VE Pro, and this is not something that you're familiar with, these colored blocks up here, these represent instances. And all an instance is, is a set of channels. Okay, so um, in my strings, for example, I have all of these channels over here, solo violin, violin section, viola section, solo cello, celli section, basses section, and harp. Now, I, personally, I normally put harp in pitched percussion, but the Berlin Free Orchestra threw harp into the strings, so that's why I have it here. But you'll notice that each one of these, these are all each individual channels, and each individual channel has a unique port number, one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. And then stereo output pair, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's because I do want to keep the audio separate in Darko or Cubase or whatever's connecting to VE Pro. I want to connect uh, the audio channels in a unique way so that you know I can always listen to just the flute or just the, the cello. Don't want those things to be blended together. Okay, so starting in VE Pro, I create instances basically for my instrument families, and then I create channels. Each channel has a unique port and a unique audio interface, or sorry, audio uh, output pair. And I base that, I plan that anyway, here. You know, I, I would say, okay, this is my flute, and then I've got oboe and clarinet and so on and so forth. Uh, in my strings over here, since that's where we're starting with in today's lesson, I've got a violin section. There's no violin one and two in the Berlin Free Orchestra, although in, in their other libraries, their more full-fledged libraries, there are multiple violin sections. Then there's a viola section. Uh, unfortunately, no, no solo viola, but there is a solo cello. Then there's a celli section, double bass section, and then uh, there's, of course, the harp. So what that means is I need seven ports in order to run my string instance so that each one has its own port. And I want to show you how we configure that. Again, if you're new to VE Pro or you're wondering how this would work, you go into the preferences and here you can say per instance, how many MIDI ports do you want? How many MIDI outputs and MIDI inputs? Now, I don't really use MIDI inputs uh, here in this workflow, so just forget that for the duration of my, my series here. Audio outputs, you have to choose 24 if you want 12 pairs, right? So if you want five pairs, you need to choose 10 outputs because each pair is of course two outputs left and right. So that's why the audio outputs are 24 to match my 12 ports. That means each channel can get its own port up to 12 unique instruments per instance. And each uh, unique channel can also get its own audio output pair left and right. So that's where I set that. If you are setting that um, and you've got VE Pro open, sometimes it asks you to, to restart so it can reconfigure itself. I wouldn't use more ports and more audio outputs and inputs than you, than you really need because that does slow down load up and slow down the shutdown process, okay? So we've got our ports a bit more clearly understood, what we're doing with them. Ports are instruments. Now, bass switches, these are channels, or channels are bass switches. What's a bass switch? Well, a bass switch for me, and let me load up Dorico's expression map here so we can look at what's going on in this string collection. So this is my Berlin Free Orchestra strings uh, expression map here. And these, natural, pizzicato, spiccato, staccato, these are bass switches for me. These are unique um, articulations that would not be layered together. In other words, I'm not ever going to play pizzicato and staccato or tremolo and spiccato at the same time. These are generally going to be unique. And so I'm going to assign these a channel that's unique. 
I generally have found that it's quite safe, even though there are only 16 MIDI channels. Um, I have not run into a situation where I needed more than 16 channels. So I will just preempt any questions there are out there about, oh my gosh, if you're using MIDI channels, isn't that very limited? It would appear so on, on the surface of things, but I've actually found that it is not. And it's one of the reasons that I use MIDI CC to switch between add-ons. So base switches for my library here, I need natural, pizzicato, spiccato, staccato, and tremolo. And if we look back at uh, Vienna Ensemble Pro, we can actually see what's going on in our strings library, what's available, right? So if I go in here and I look at strings, we'll see that I'm just gonna open all of these up and look at the articulations that are available. And you'll see that legato is available. You have legato available in the solo violin and the solo cello, but everything else just has sustains, spiccato, pizzicato, and tremolo. You don't actually have staccato actually available anywhere here. This is just a limitation of the Berlin Free Orchestra. There's sustains and spiccato for everybody. Um, the violins, uh, the sections, it looks like, the viola, celli, and violin section, they also have tremolo and pizzicato, right? So I look at the library and I essentially make a list of the articulations that I need, and then those are my bass switches. Now, if there are variations, for example, let's say um, that you have a sustain with a soft attack or an accented attack, a bold attack, right? Let's say you've got uh, that sort of variation and you're thinking, well, do I need to assign a unique channel to each type of attack? No. What I would do there is I would use channel one for sustains, which in the sort of lingo of Dorico's expression maps is, is natural. Then I would have three add-ons, uh, right? The, the, the one add-on would be an accented attack. One would be maybe a bold attack. Uh, so on and so forth, however many I needed, those would be add-ons. Um, then by doing that with add-ons, as you'll see, we actually have a lot more flexibility than just the 16 channels that we get because we have 128 values that we could use with MIDI CCs. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. Let's jump back here and look at this spreadsheet. So we've got our ports. These are instruments. Bass switches. These are our fundamental articulations and their channels. They're, they're addressed using channels. Then we have add-ons, and add-ons are a particular kind of articulation setting in an expression map in Dorico, and we're going to control those with MIDI CCs. I will say I'm using MIDI CC in this example because the MIDI uh, CC that's assigned by default in the Orchestral Tools Sign Player, which is the one you're using if you're using Berlin series or the Berlin Free Orchestra as I am in these demos, the default is CC70, but you can change that to something else. I think in CSS, for example, the default uh, CC is 58, and you can use CC58. Again, you've got values from 0 to 127 for a total of 128 different values. That could be 128 add-ons for things like consordino, uh, you know, or accented attack, soft attack, bold, long, short. Uh, you know, whatever the variations on your base switches are that you need, those are all going to be add-ons. So I go about um, filling out this spreadsheet. I map out how many ports I need, how many instrument families do I have, you know, like I might realize that, um, you know, I also want percussion uh, or maybe I want hybrid, you know, like my synths. Um, something like that is going to be maybe an instance in VE Pro, an instrument family. And then I identify all of the different, you know, maybe I have my subtractive um, and maybe I have my FM and my additive, something like that. You figure out how many ports you need per instance first before you go into VE Pro, before you've built any expression maps or anything. Then I come into my base switches and I'm gonna, you know, think, okay, I've got natural. These are the same as sustain. I've got, um, Let's see, legato, which I guess in, in, a lot of people might wonder why legato isn't an add-on, uh, but because legato is so special, I granted its own channel. All right, so then I would have staccato. Let's say um, I think that the, the, the way that I had this configured, I have um, pizzicato, 
or actually spiccato first, pizzicato, and tremolo, right? And then I would say, okay, um, natural is always going to be on channel one, legato is always on channel two, staccato is on channel three, spiccato is channel four, pizzicato on five, and tremolo on six. That means that, um, you know, with staccato, for example, on channel three, that means when I send um, data out on channel three on port two, I'm going to get staccato flute in the winds instance, but I'm going to get staccato violin in the strings instance. And I'd better get some kind of staccato FM synth patch in my hybrid synths library. In other words, channel three should always retrieve staccato and it doesn't matter what instrument family it's going to, it doesn't matter what port it's on, channel three always means staccato. And this starts to get at this unified sort of theory that we can, this unified model that we can apply where we have a system where no matter, you know, you buy a brand new library, you want to integrate it into your Dorico setup, you maybe get a new synthesizer, or you enter a workflow where you're writing music in an entirely new genre, and you've never had to use, uh, you know, Middle Eastern wind instruments, or you've never had to use, uh, you know, African uh, wind instruments. Now you bring those libraries in, and you just staccato, that's always... Uh, channel three. Natural sustains, always channel one. So, of course, I'm not going to have pizzicato in my French horns, which means pizzicato being dedicated to channel five. Um, that's just the way it goes. I basically am giving up channel five because there's no pizzicato French horn. But that's okay. Again, I know it can seem like maybe the limitation of 16 channels is going to be a problem. I personally haven't found that. I've found that it's more than adequate. Um, okay, so at this point, we've covered the fundamentals of the switching structure. We've covered the fundamentals of using ports for instruments, um, channels for bass switches, main articulations, and then MIDI CCs for add-ons. And I've given you some examples of all of those and shown you why and how I have VE Pro set up uh, as well as Dorico. Now I'm going to stop there because I am going to be diving into these details more as we cover brass and winds and then ultimately talking a little bit about percussion maps as well in the Berlin Free Orchestra in upcoming videos. So I'll see you in the next video. If you have questions about any of this, please do post in the comments. I appreciate your support. Please like and subscribe if this is the first time that you've seen a video and you found it helpful. And uh, that really helps me surface my videos to a larger audience. And I'll see you in the next video where I think we're going to be jumping into brass and looking at all this stuff there for the Berlin Pre-Orchestra. Thanks again. Bye.